If you've been here to this event, then you've heard some interesting stories, but I guarantee you, you're not going to hear a story as interesting as you're going to hear tonight. Simone Tilly is offered to tell her story and share her story with you, and I'd like to invite her to the stage right now. Simone. Times that I would ask my uncles to go hunting with them and they 
said, no, girls don't shoot. I'm the better shot than most of them. <laughs> so, let's fast forward a few years. I was about 15 at the time. <clears throat> my uncle came home drunk one night and decided that my grandma was going to be his punching bag. <clears throat> There was a rage that came over me in that moment that I wasn't going to allow it to happen anymore. I confronted my uncle and I tussled with him for a little while until I got him up against the wall. I said, if you ever put your hands on me or anybody in this house again, I'll kill you. I know where you sleep. I'll find you. At that moment, and after that, my uncle never drank again. And he never put his hands on anybody ever again. At that moment, I knew that I was more than nothing. <clears throat> At 17, I was on my own. Found a lot of comfort and a lot of unhealthy coping mechanisms. By 19, I was addicted to math. I was able to quit doing math cold turkey, and I haven't touched it since. Been sober off of that for 17 years now. <laughs> At 20 years old, I was pregnant with my first child, and I had a very horrible pregnancy. I almost died a couple times during it and almost died giving birth uh, to my oldest son, Tim, who's here with us tonight. When I was 20, I met my mom after I had given birth to Tim. Uh, it was the first time I ever met my mom in my whole life. And I met my younger half-sister that I never knew existed. So <clears throat> my mom said, oh, I, I want to have a chance to make things right be a part of your life now. So I gave her that opportunity. Figure everybody deserves a chance. That lasted about six months and she disappeared again, which I kind of expected that to happen. But it left me with that self-deception once again that I wasn't good enough. Fast forward about five years, I gave birth to my second son, Rocky. Another five years go by, I had given birth to my third son, CJ. Some of you know CJ. <laughs> He's a monster. <laughs> Back then I was married, I had a family, and what seemed like a happy life. Behind closed doors it was a much different story. <clears throat> Once I was able to return to work, I started looking for work, and I found Breezer a posting for assistant manager at a bar wash. And I was like, hmm. Being from a background that I had dealt with in the automatics, <laughs> much smaller level than what I knew. I didn't know I was walking into this. So I applied and um, I ended up doing an interview with Justin. Longest interrogation of my life. <laughs> About a two-hour interview with me and Justin sitting in this big room at the Weld County Workforce Center. Just me and him across the table from each other. It wasn't an interrogation, but man, did it feel like that. Um, I went through some other groups after that, and I got hired on as an assistant manager in training um, at, to start at the Camp Pratt location until it really was completed. I had to learn how to perform my job at a very quick level. Um, in a lot of ways, that was pretty easy, and in some ways, that was pretty hard. So it really opened up. We went into that location head first. All was good. And then my life derailed. I lost everything that I had in the blink of an eye. I 
My trusted husband wouldn't hurt me in such a way. Stabbed me in front of my two youngest children. I lost all three of them that night. Because of what I allowed and what I hid, I paid the price for those actions. At that time, I felt like I was guilty. But it wasn't my fault. I had to learn that. I didn't know love to be anything different than abuse. I never experienced it. Real love, anyways. <clears throat> that was the point that I could have given up. In a lot of ways, I lost faith in those around me. I lost faith in anybody that I trusted. I didn't trust anyone. I kept my job, though. I kept going to work, and doing my job, trying to keep myself together in a world that completely was not together. I would leave the house to go, go to work and get food and back to my empty house just doing what my life had become. A house that was filled full of happiness and laughter was now filled with silence. There was times that I plotted suicide.
had to deal with anything that was causing pain, anger, depression, sadness. I confronted my issues head on. I cracked open the wounds of my past and decided to stick my hands in and get all the toxicity out. That was pretty painful. I knew that if I didn't heal the wounds of my past, I was always going to bleed on those who didn't cut me. I found out in those moments that when you forgive someone who isn't sorry, you're forgiving yourself too. Once I did that, I could stitch up my wounds and begin to heal. I removed everyone from my life that was bringing anything less to the table than happiness. I went to counseling and took it seriously. I learned what love wasn't. I learned how to practice self-love. I stayed very committed to my happiness. I started laughing more and worrying less. My drive and focus came back. I worked harder. I pushed myself harder. It was all hard work, but well worth the investment. I pushed myself really hard to learn to care about people again, to learn to trust people again. I started to help other employees not give up in hard times. I was proof that life is hard, but the attitude that you carry and how you react is what will determine your future. I set goals for myself that I wanted to accomplish. At two years, I wanted to become the site manager at Greeley, and at five years, I wanted to become a regional manager or help Justin do his job in some way. One year of solid work on myself after my life fell apart, and I got my kids back. <laughs> CJ was home, Timmy came home shortly after, and Rocky came home too. I defeated anything in my life that was trying to destroy me, and life started to come back together. At one and a half years, I was offered site manager, six months ahead of my goal. I learned how to genuinely care about people. Greeley really became my family. It took a lot of hard work, grit and determination, and a whole lot of humility to get that site to become my family. We set goals as a site. One of the goals that we had, and was one, one of my personal vendettas was to watch more cars than Mulberry at the time. We did that over two years ago. I don't know. It's funny, I would sit in meetings and tell Jake I'm coming for you. Uh, we also wanted to have the most active unlimited wash passes. We achieved that too. So here we are, just over five years out. And I achieved regional manager six months ahead of my five-year goal. I wouldn't have been able to achieve my goals if I hadn't heard Dustin say those words, you've got to genuinely care about people. I'm thankful for Breeze Through, I'm thankful for those words, and I'm thankful they proved everyone in my life wrong by showing me that I mattered. And I could, I could amount to great things in my life by caring about myself and others. A lot of people talk about their spirit animals. I have a mother's spirit. I'm selfless, loving, determined, and caring, and firm. I've made many sacrifices to make sure that those around me are equipped with the knowledge and skills and abilities to keep going no matter how hard life gets. I hope that my story helps people stand up for their own happiness and do what's right for them. I'm going to end with a, a quote from Eleanor Roosevelt that I feel is pretty touching. No one can make you feel bad about yourself without your permission. The end.